Hello guys, today I want to tell you something interesting about spider silk, so let's start. Uh, spider silk is a wonder material that weight for weight is stronger than, than steel, tauger than kevlar and can be more elastic than rubber. It's also flexible and antimicrobial. Scientists have used silk to make bulletproof armor, violent strings, medical bandages, optical fiber, cables, and even extravagant clothing. I don't think people would believe you if you told them that this creature is dead if you scale it up. To the size of the human, it could catch an aeroplane with the material that it makes itself out of itself, says Fritz Horvath as evolutionary biologist at the University of Oxford. Spider silk is made of a blend of different proteins linked together into chain produced by special glands all spinnerets on the spider's rear end. All spiders produce silk. Some spiders can produce several different kinds, but uh, not necessarily as webs like those depicted in Halloween decorations. Here are some bizarre ways spiders use their silk beyond the static webs they employ to snag their prey. Um, silk uh, as a passive web for bugs to fly into may be the least interesting spider hunting method of all. To catch their next meal, spiders may use their silk as nets or as, or as lessons, whips, binds, disguises fishing lines and lures. Most spiders avoid ants because they are often predatory themselves, but one family of spiders treats ants as Joe. When the wall spider gets an ant alone, it uh, runs circles around, the victim, around its victim. All the while churning, churning out a silk cord and wrapping the ant from a safe distance. After the ant is all trundled up, the spider goes in for the kill by chomping the ant at the base of the aten antennae. Um, the orange faced spider spins a web as a snare, but deploys it in an unusual way. It waves a web between its four front legs, holds the creation wide open while hanging upside down and waits. Once an insect wanders by, it snaps its prey using its web as a net. This net casting hunter can catch prey wandering by nets or even flying in the mid-air like a lacrosse player captures the ball. Then the victorious spider bundles up its prey and kills it. In uh, 1883, the Krakatoa volcano in present-day Indonesia erupted with the force of over 10,000 hydrogen bombs obliterating most of the, of the islands and converting it into a leafless wasteland. Three months later, visiting scientists were surprised to find one life form, present in the region microscopic spiders. These spiders weren't on the newborn island because they survived the blast. Rather, they had traveled the uh, in the aftermath of the eruption by ballooning. Uh, now a well-known phenomenon, uh, ballooning occurs when spiders stream their silk into the air, catching the vines like a sail for a loft. 
Spiders have been found in the middle of the ocean, hitching a ride in, on the jet stream and on remote islands hundreds of mile, miles from the mainland. Uh, not all spiders uh, balloon to travel extreme distances. Some rally on it to flee from predators or cover shoal lands without expanding much, much energy. When a spider balloons, it literally tiptoes and hoists its abdomen towards the skies. It doesn't always need favorable winds to kite off. Breezes are better than gusts, but instead relies on electrostatic repulsion to generate most of the lift. Spider silk is negatively charged, similar to the surface of ears that's negatively charged up by the 40,000 daily thunderstorms around the world. Like charges repel, to, so the force pushes the silk off the ground to help the spider take flight. Spiders can sense electric fields with the, with the hairs on their legs, so they may lift a limb to survey the atmospheric conditions before executing a great escape. Orb waving uh, spiders don't just construct their homes from silk. Some of the spiders make an effort to decorate it too. The waves rolled out their webs, stripes of sickly banded silk called stabilimenta. Scientists uh, first thought these structures worked to stabilize the web, but the theory was disproved. After the they found that the patterns were only loosely knitted into the, <coughs> into the web's fabric. Today, the function of stabilmenta is still a mystery. But several hypnotists seek to explain it. Uh, since the stabilmenta, the stabilmenta are woven only by daytime roaming spiders, uh, researchers have guessed that these spiders intend for their elaborate web designs to be seen. The popping uh, patterns might be used to camouflage the spiders by obs obscuring the silk hotel of the spider. Scientists think they may also increase the privacy size of the spider. Other leading theories include that these structures reflect more ultraviolet light in the same way flowers and foliage do, attracting more insects to the structures. Alternatively, they could serve as a stop sign the birds don't accidentally fly into it and damage the web. The downside of these woven motifs is, is that they seem to also draw more, more spider eating spiders by making a web uh, look more conspicuous to these visual hunters as protection from the elements. Jumping, jumping spiders roam freely during the day but at night or in the midst of cold or rain, they will spin themselves a silken shelter. Jumping spiders use these pup tents to shed their external shell safely, <coughs> store their egg sacs or hibernate. One scientist has speculated that the ability to spin cozy cocoons that insulate the spider from the cold is one reason the Himalayan jumping spider can survive the frigid temperatures as at elevations of uh, 22,000 feet, making it one of the highest dwelling non-migratory animals in the world. 
as buffers against tides. One spider spins cocoons to protect itself from the daily tides where it dwells. The deceased spiders scuttle amidst coral, abandoned ear shells and the bottoms of kelp on the beach during low tides. When the water rises, the spiders seal themselves in these nooks and crannies with waterproof silk. Researchers have found that the spider lowers its breathing to reduce how fast it burns through the oxygen in its air pocket. Scientists still have questions, such as how the web can withstand salt or how the spider keeps time with the tide, as underwater breathing tanks. Only one urchin lives most of its life underwater. The diving bell spider, like all other terrestrial spiders, it only breathes air. Before it submerges, it glooms a bubble onto its posterior as a temperature scuba tank. For a longer term solution, it spins an air fillet dome shaped diving bell with silicon liquid vegetation as its underwater home. Uh, diving bell spiders pump up their homes using bubbles they gather from the water surface. Their silken layer permits the exchange of gas molecules to the surrounding water. Scientists uh, have measured oxygen diffusing into the diving bell and carbon dioxide diffusing out to facilitate that a spider's breathing. For this reason, scientists have even likened the homespun structure to a gill. In oxygen-poor waters, these spiders will expand the size of their homes to stuff in more air. Also, the gas exchange is efficient. Eventually, the diving bells ring, so the spiders need to resurface on once a day to gather bubbles for reinflation. As door hinders to burrows, trapdoor spiders and tarantulas will use silks to reinforce the tunnels that they makes, make. So it's like a building material, says Sebastian Echeverry, a spider researcher and communicator. Among his uh, 19 pet spiders, his favorites are his two trapdoor spiders. This kind of spider uh, furnishes its home with a solid door made of soil, leaves and silk. The hinge of the door in particular in, is spun from silk. These reactions keep the door shut in the morning and leave it open as they hunt at night, when the spiders are more active. Uh, radiating from the empty way a trails of silk threads that, acts, that act as strip lines. Uh, when a victim touches these threads, the ambush hunters will sense their vibrations through the silken bones. The doors serve as protection, especially against their predatory arch nemesis, parasitic wasps. In the, weaving, in the event of an attack, the trapdoor spiders use their fangs to hold the door shut. A move oddly reminiscent of a grumpy human teenager, but the stinging predators usually win out by chewing through the flap. The oldest known spider in the wild, a trapdoor spider, residing in southwest Australia, died in 2016 at the age of 43, when it was killed by a parasitic wasp that raided its home as community hubs. 
uh, not all spiders are lone hunters. Researchers know uh, 25 social species out of the 45,000 45, described. Social spiders often live together in colonies up to uh, 50,000 strong. Also, a membership of around 1,000 is usually the optimum size. Working together, such an army of arachids can build impressive homes of silk. The Anolosimus eximus spider colony in South America can spin webs spanning 25 feet in lead, constituting one of the largest silken sun sanctuaries in the natural world. Only the female members outnumbering the males upwards of five to one will work together to build, repair and clean their home. Uh, the large numbers of the colony and Garangtuan web come in handy when the spiders go after larger, a larger prey that an individual can take on alone. Uh, the spiders works as a team to bring down these larger insects, such as grasshoppers or butterflies. But <clears throat> by overwhelming the victims with their numbers, if the analysis webs are distributed by predatory swarms of ants or wasps, the spider troops can mount in defense in return. The vibrations of the interlopers are easily transmitted to the vast webs, which disables, disables any surprise attack. The victor of the battle, spider or, or device, will have a bountiful meal from, from the phone. Large web of silk are no good against larger animals, especially birds that pilfer the silk to adorn their own nests as drinking fountains. While spiders usually quench their thirst by sucking on the juices on their prey, they can also hydrate themselves the traditional way by imbibing directly from the water droplets or smart puddles. To help themselves a trip to the water hole, they occasionally sip on the droplets that condense on their webs. Spider silk can be excellent at drawing mouse mistour from the air. Researchers studied the silk of Cribalate spiders and found that the key to its water collecting property in the fibes shifting structure itself. In the presence of Humidity, the filaments scrunch up into knotty puffs spaced between smooth, untangled threads to look like threaded beds on a, tree, on a string. These knotty puffs are moisture magnets. When water condenses onto the silk, the droplets will slide along the smooth regions towards the puffs and close sense into larger globus, globulus there. Uh, the no body structure of the silk is so efficient as sucking water of, uh, out of thin air that is inspired scientists to develop similar materials in hopes to harvest water from fog. Uh, the proteins in spider silk are a valuable commodity. Uh, making silk demands energy on the spider's part, so sometimes it will add it its own silk, allowing its body to recycle the proteins to make new silk. Many spiders <coughs> routinely tear down their webs and begin again, so they may as well recycle their building materials. There are gerald spiders or dev drop spider take silk eating to a whole new level by robbing other spider silk. This spider is a kleptoparasite, which means it prefers the insect bounty of other spiders rather than hunt of its own. 
so guys that's it for today uh, i wish you a good day and bye bye